Hello students, good afternoon. This is Professor Henderson and this is part two of the head to toe assessment. So when assessing the skin, look at the color of the skin. And in a light skinned person, the color should appear to be pink or rotty. In a dark skinned person, it may appear to be brown or olive color. Look for any um, pigmentation, hyperpigmentation. Um, hyperpigmentation sometimes it's um, commonly in elderly patient on even color of the skin. Look for cyanosis. Cyanosis is the bluest discoloration in the lips, nail beds, and conjunctiva, and it also indicates um, adequate oxygenation. Jaundice, look at the conjunctiva, retract the conjunctiva and look at it for any discoloration of the sclera, any yellowing of the, of the um, conjunctiva indicates um, damage or liver, liver problems due to the destruction of RBCs. Erythema, erythema is the reddish, reddish um, discoloration of the skin. Moisture. Is this patient's skin dry? Is it well hydrated? How does the mucous membrane appear to be? Is it well moisturized? It tells how well the patient is hydrated. The temperature of the skin depends on adequate blood, blood circulation. How about the texture? How does the, feel, how does the skin feel? Does it feel smooth or it's rough? How about the turgor? The turgor tells you the elasticity of the skin. Skin loses its elasticity with age. It also tells you how about fluid status. The, be the best place to check, the most um, accurate uh, site to check for the skin turgor is the um, clavicle with your fingertips. It shows how well the patient is hydrated. Skin, hair, and nails. Look at the look for um, asymmetry. Look at the borders. Look at the color. Look at the diameter. Assessment assessment of pitting edema from plus one to plus four. Um, asymmetry on even shape. One half of does not match the other. Border, it looked or it feels ragged. Color, look for hyperpigmentation, blue or black or brown. Diameter, is it greater than six um, centimeters? Edema. Edema tells you how um, if the patient for fluid overload with CHF patients, you will get pitting edema. Assess the pitting edema plus one to plus four. Look for any lesions, any open lesions. I have a quick uh, quiz question there and the answer is erythema. That's a very simple question. Um, look at the, um, the skin, hair, and nails. Look at the, um, color of the hair. Look at the distribution of the hair. Is it evenly distributed? Look at the quantity. Do they have alopecia? Is it a lot of hairs are missing? Look at the thickness. Look at the texture. Look at the lubrication. Is it well lubricated? Is it dry? That would tell you the status of the patient. Look at the um, the nails. The color of the nail should be pink and transparent, smooth and rounded. The convex of the nail bed should be 160 um, degree, that's the normal. Change in bed angle of greater than 180 indicates clubbing. 
Look at the nails. Is it clean? Is it short and well trimmed? Look at the configuration. A larger angle indicates um, um, deficit in oxygenation. Look at the symmetry of the nail. Is it symmetrical? Inspection and palpation. Inspect the patient head, noting the position, the size, the shape, and the contour. Examine the size, shape, and contour of the skull. Palpate the temporal mandibular joint space bilaterally for any clicking sounds, any pain, any discomfort. Ask patient if they have any history of headaches. Ask patient if they have a history of concussion. If they had any history of head trauma, if they're involved in um, any type of contact sports, checking the TMJ, ask the patient to open their mouth wide, ask if they have any pain or feeling a clicking or a popping sound, the eyes. So the eyes has six muscles. There are six muscles in the eye that controls the movement of the eye laterally, superiorly, inferiorly. So these muscles control the eyes. So um, do the H test. The H test is a, um, a test that is done to check the uh, movements of the eye. So it, it's called the six cardinal, six cardinal field of gaze. Helps the nurse to determine how well these six muscles are working. And also the cranial nerves, the three, uh, four, three, four, and also six, how these um, cranial nerves are working. So nystagmus. Um, nystagmus is involuntary oscillation of the um, the eyes from injury. So when you perform the H test, I will show you in class how to perform the um, the six cardinal field of gaze. And in, with that test, if the patient eyes is um, is 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 um oscillating or moving it indicates some type of damage to these muscles also check their peripheral vision external structure of the eye look at the position of the eye um, look for any exothalamus, bulging eye due to hypothyroidism, alignment of the eye, look at the eyebrow, are they symmetrical, Is, are the uh, hairs and textures are coarse, look at the eyelids for pitosis, drooping of the eye, eyelids, look at the lacrimal apparatus located into the anterior of the orbit. Production of tears. Look at the conjunctiva and the sclera. Look at the cornea, which is a color colorless part of the eye that covers the pupil and the iris. Look for any abnormalities. And um, performing the perla test. So the perla test is done. Perla stands for pupil equal, wrong, reactive to light and accommodation. The nurse dims the light and um, asks the patient to look straight ahead. And the nurse go on the side and dim the, li dim the lights and um, shine the lights on the side of the eye. The eye, the normal response will be constriction. So let's say with the pupil, it's about... Um, three millimeters, it should um, constrict to um, one millimeter and get smaller. So that's the perla test. 
instruct the patient to avoid looking at the light. Look straight ahead. Also, you need to dim the lights before you um, use the pen light to shine the light on the pupil. pupil. Look at the, um, the internal eye structures, the retina, the coi, the optic nerves, the retinal vessel. The retinal vessels are the, um, are the vessels found on top or back of the eye that looks like, actually looks like a three branches. These ves if these vessels are damaged, um, normally they're damaged in diabetic rhinopathy secondary to elevated blood glucose level. The fovea centralis, um, that's a central vision, consists of um, packed cones in the eye. Um, the optic nerve, which is cranial nerve 2, function to transfer visual information from the retina to the vision center of the brain through um, electrical impulses. Croid is the thickness of the eye that provides oxygen and nutrients to the eye. The retina, the retina is the um, thin layers of tissue of the eyes that um, is black of the, it's back of the eyes that receive, receives light and focus on light. The ears, look at the ears, assessment of the ears. Look at the size of the ears, are they equal in size? Look at the shape, is it symmetrical? Is one ear bigger than the other? Look at the position, is it vertical? Look at the color, the color should be same as the color of the face. Look for any, um, any erythema or any discharges. Low sets of air with unusual angle indicates chromosomal abnormality such as um, Down syndrome. Use an otoscope to inspect the normal appearance of the tympanic membrane should be pearly gray and translucent. The air canal Instruct the patient to avoid moving the head during the examination to avoid damage to the tympanic membrane. Look at the color. Look for any redness, any discharge. Um, look for any foreign bodies. Look at the serum. And the serum, should, it's a yellowish, waxy substance. Green foul-smelling discharge indicates an infection. Look at the color of the tympanic membrane. It's supposed to be translucent, gray, shiny, pearly, and free from tears. Hearing acuity. There are three types of hearing loss, conduction, sensory, neural, and mix. So conduction hearing loss occurs when the passage of song is blocked in the middle ear. What are some factors that can cause conduction hearing loss? Um, ceramine, otitis media, for foreign agents, all of these can cause um, conductive um, hearing loss and they treat conductive hearing loss with a hearing aid. Sensory, sensory neural hearing loss is caused by damage to the inner ear or nerve and it, and it is permanent. It's caused by exposure to loud noise. Treatment is cochlear implant and hearing aid. And sensory and mixed hearing loss is a combination of conduction and sensory motor both. Autotoxicity. Certain medication, antibiotics, aminoglycosides, these medications such as streptomycin, amicacin, neomycin, kinomycin, these medications are known to cause um, damage to the air. They're autotoxic. 